called today we're making red beans and rice yes real red beans and rice so if you're not excited to hear that then you don't know what red beans and rice is and you need to pay attention today we're making real red beans and rice so let's get started so we're going to start with one pound of smoked sausage I like Koneka brand. You can read it right here. Koneka comes from Koneka, Alabama. Can't beat it. So you don't have to use Koneka brand. Use whatever type of smoked sausage you use. What you don't need to do is you don't need to worry about finding andouille. You just use a regular good old pork sausage. Smoked. This is hickory smoked. And that's where we'll start. We're going to take this up and chop it up into some coins right now. All right. So here we are. We got that whole pound cut up in little coins. Now that sausage I was using, you can see was, you know, a little, little small diameter, and that's, that's all right. If yours is bigger, don't worry about it. You know, just put it up in some coins, or if it's really big and you want to, you can half moon it, whatever you want. Just make sure you're using a good smoked sausage. You don't want that kielbasa or any of that stuff that's not firm in the middle. All right, so we're gonna get this in the pot and get it started. All right, so. Put it in the pot we put it over about medium heat and we're just gonna brown it down a little bit right look at that you know get a little bit of brown on there we're not you know mainly we're just gonna render some of that fat out you know about like that just a few minutes you see all the the fat that's left behind that's what we need so once you get it to about this point, you can go ahead and remove this sausage, just put it in a bowl and set it aside for a little while. All right, now to the pot, we left all that oil from the, from the sausage behind. We're gonna add two cups of Trinity. Now I use frozen Trinity and we'll talk about that in just a sec, but we'll go ahead and dump that in right now. Now as that cooks, we'll go ahead and we're gonna scrape the bottom and get all that browning from the sausage back up. That's really gonna to add to the flavor. See how that's coming up right now? That's what we're gonna do. So I know I've told you all this before, but this is what I use. Seasoning blend, right? It's just frozen Trinity. You could use fresh Trinity if you want. You know, what you'll do is get about a medium white onion dice it up half a bell pepper two stalks of celery that should be about it you can adjust as you need it but that's what it is right there that's the secret to everything so we're gonna let this simmer on down for a little bit we're on medium heat still we're gonna let this simmer on down and cook and we'll be back. All right, so you can see they've been cooking for a little while, starting to wilt down real nice. You can see the color on there from getting that stuff off the bottom from that sausage. It's really, I mean, shoot. <laughs> this is looking pretty dang good just by itself, huh? Yeah, so now what I want to do is we're going to add a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning, a full tablespoon. It may look like a lot when I pour it in there, but you gotta remember this is gonna be a huge pot of food and then you're gonna pour it over rice. It's not, it's not gonna be spicy, not really. Um, red beans and rice is not a really spicy dish. Um, you can add hot sauce to it later if you want it hot. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna add about two to four cloves of minced garlic. You know, do it to your taste. You know, when I see a recipe it says two, I double it to four, that's what I do. I always double the garlic in any recipe. So, whatever you feel is right for you. And you know, to be honest, I didn't even measure that. I just dumped a bunch in. And we'll let this go for, I mean, you can see the, the vegetables are pretty soft. Um, Doesn't have to go too much longer. Maybe another five minutes, you know, let that Cajun season and garlic really marry in there real good. Because, you know, the, what we're doing is building a base. This is the base of seasoning. It's going to flavor up. 
them beans. All right. Okay, so as we're, while we're waiting on that, we're gonna go ahead and get our beans ready. So what you're gonna use, let's see, can you see that? Let's see. Camellia brand kidney beans is what I got here. So that's two pounds. I'm only gonna use half this bag. They didn't have, they were out of the one pound bag. So I bought the two pound and I'll just measure it in half and use half. So you notice that they're still dry. I did not soak these overnight. Do not soak your beans. You may see other recipes, people tell you to do it and they're wrong. I'm telling you, do not soak your beans. So what you're going to do though, is you are going to rinse them off and you're going to sort through them and you're going to look for anything abnormal. We'll do that now. All right, so all we're doing right now is just rinsing these off under some cold water, you know, picking out any half ones, anything that looks bad, make sure there's no rocks or anything. You know, with this Camellia brand, I've never found any rocks, but I've heard of people finding them in other brands, I don't know, but just make sure you rinse them off and go through make sure everything's good once that's done we'll get those and add those into the pot all right here you go check this out i mean that's just looking really good right there this time for some time one teaspoon dried thyme leaves add that then throw in two bay leaves Maybe a little bitty extra one just for, just because. Let's add that sausage back in. Stir it all up real good. Now let's get them red beans in. All right, look at that, it's boiling. Beans are floating to the top, it's in a good boil. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn the heat down to low, sorry about that. Get this heat down to low, and we're gonna simmer this for three hours. Three hours. We'll come back and check in, because about the two hour mark is when the magic starts happening, and I'll definitely have to show you that. So, I mean, that was it, that was simple. Look how fast that went together. Just a little bit of prep work, put it on three hours while it's simmering, you can do whatever you want, housework, yard work, Watch movie, NASCAR. Well, there ain't no sports on right now because damn coronavirus. But yeah, it got three hours. You know what I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna drink some whiskey. Okay, so this red beans and rice recipe that I'm making, uh, you know what? I didn't really invent it. It compiled over years and years of red beans and rice. You know, every recipe you see, you take a little bit of, add to it, and you mix it up. I'm sure. There's plenty of people that make this almost exactly the same. It's not a secret, but for those who haven't had it, man, it's really good. It's so simple. So I really hope you guys um, try this recipe. But real quick, let's talk whiskey because that's just as fun, right? It's almost turkey season. Did you all know that? Spring season's upon us. So for that, I got some wild turkey. This is what we're drinking today. Can you see this? Wild Turkey Rare Breed, 116.8 proof. It's about a $40 bottle, you believe that? It's probably the best value bourbon in the world right now, at least in my opinion. I'll change my mind next week when I'm drinking old granddad 114 or something, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, y'all, it's been about an hour. Let me show you what we're looking like here, an hour in. Look at that. It's just been simmering for about an hour. You know, the hardest, the hardest thing about this is the way this smells. It's so good knowing that you have two more hours left to go. I mean, it wasn't 15 minutes in, it started smelling the whole house up good. But it'll be worth the wait. Trust me. All right, so earlier I said something about, um, don't worry, it won't be spicy, add the Cajun season. Well, let's, let's clarify that a little bit. So it won't be spicy to most folks, but if you're one of those that are sim like sensitive to spicy, you don't like any heat at all, don't use it. Just leave that out um, and use salt and pepper, you know, to taste whatever you want. Also, whatever type of um, 
sausage you use, the, the whoever makes it, it could be add to the spice. A lot of times I'll buy a Cajun seasoned, not an andouille, but a Cajun seasoned sausage. Of course, that makes it a little spicier too, but we like that here. So it's all right. So it could be, you know, it's subjective, you know, us, us folks down south, this isn't spicy, <laughs> but you never know. So there's that. Also, you know, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. The ham hocks, you don't have to use them. You should. I mean, it's going to add a lot of flavor to it. But if you if you can't find them, you don't have them, you can leave those out and this will still be delicious. And then the other thing is the water. I use eight cups of water. Over the years, I've seen a lot of different things. You know, a lot of, sometimes people use chicken stock. Um, a lot of people in a lot of recipes say chicken stocks, you know, adds to the flavor. Well, I'm going to tell you for this one, I think it's a little unnecessary um, and almost uh, detrimental to the to the dish if you use chicken stock you know we put down a really solid base layer of seasonings and flavor right you saw it um that's the the base of the dish that's the seasoning that's all the flavor you need so with that water what you're going to do with the ham hocks and that seasoning and the beans themselves you're going to make its own it's, it's it'll using chicken stock just not going to be it's just a little overkill and it doesn't really do as well i think so try this with water just trust and believe i don't know where that saying come from but trust and believe and keep sipping wild turkey whiskey it's the best all right y'all look at that you see this Ooh, it's been about two hours so you can see you know, a lot of the liquid has evaporated and, the, and it's gone down. So at this point, what we're going to do is, it's about two hours. We're going to go ahead and take the ham hocks out for a couple reasons. One, they've already done their job. They've, they've contributed as much as they probably are going to. Also, with the water level going down, the water level going down, pulling these out will get them beans back under there. So we're going to go ahead and pull these out right now. And then I'll show you what's up. All right, y'all, look at that. So we pulled the, the hammocks out. And you know the science between displacement of liquids, right? By pulling them out, then beans got more into the water. But I want you to look at this. Do you see this? I mean, that looks like gravy, right? That's right. Because we didn't soak them beans. We cooked them in here. And in the last two hours... While we've been sipping whiskey, magic has happened. Pure magic. So we're looking at this. And we're gonna let this go for about another hour. You know, probably in about a half hour, 45 minutes, we're gonna taste the bean, you know, and see the texture of it. You don't want no mushy beans. You know, the whole al dente, whatever. But we've done this enough times. We know it's going to be 45 minutes to an hour. But the magic has happened. So what am I going to do with those ham hocks? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick them apart and pick all the meat off of them. And probably eat it. And maybe share it with my dogs. You can throw them in the trash if you want. But yeah, this is where we're at. Whew. One more hour to go, y'all. We'll see you then. All right, y'all, look at this. We're about mm, two hours and 35, two hours, 45 minutes in. Look how thick this has gotten. I'm just saying, look, look how delicious this is. So check this out. What I'm saying is, at this point, you can look at this and you can look. Taste the beans. Are they cooked? They need a little bit longer? This is where you want to start, you know, figuring things out. These beans right here, I just had one. They need a little bit longer. As you see how thick it's gotten, if this starts to get too thick, you could pour a little bit of water in it and loosen it back up if you need to. Just 
you know, every pot of beans is different, you know. So you just got to adjust as you see fit. The way these are right now, I think I'm going to go ahead and leave these. In about 15 minutes, I'm going to try them again. I'm pretty sure right at the three-hour mark, just from every other time I've done this, everything works out perfect for me. Probably because I'm such a badass, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so here in about 15 minutes, we're going to check it again. If I got to add more water, let it go longer, I will. But yeah, it's looking real good at this point. So I didn't include how to make rice in this video. My bad. I didn't think I needed to, really. I thought everybody could cook rice. And my brother asked me if I had a rice cooker. Rice cooker? <laughs> no. Uh, I guess people don't know how to cook rice. They use rice cookers. So that's okay. Use a rice cooker. Cook rice however the directions say. You don't have a rice cooker. Let me tell you how to do it. It's super simple. You get a decent, decent pot. You want to do a two to one ratio. That's it. So get two, two cups of water, bring it to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, salt it a little bit, throw in a cup of rice, two to one. One cup of rice, two cups of water. Stir it up, bring it back to the boil, cut it to low, throw the lid on, and then let it simmer. 20 minutes. Don't take the lid off. 20 minutes. Let it simmer. At the 20 minutes, cut the heat. Let it sit for about five more minutes without taking the lid off. Take the lid off, stir it up, should be good to go. If there's a still a little bit of moisture, just let the lid off. It'll, it'll probably evaporate. But that's it. Super simple. Don't add butter to it. It makes it too sweet. A lot of these rice packages say butter if desired is not desired. Trust me. So two to one ratio, 20 minutes. Make your rice. Got the cornbread done. Got the rice done. Beans are almost done. All right, see you in a few. All right, y'all, look at this. Look at this. It's been three hours exactly. Cut the heat. Look how thick this is. Look how delicious this looks. At this point, you can pull out the bay leaves if you want. At the very least, just don't serve them to folks. I just tasted it. It's unbelievable. The beans are perfect al dente. I've seen recipes around where people talk about mashing beans up against the side to thicken it up. But look at this. You think that's necessary? No, sir, it's not. It's not necessary at all. This is perfect. Look at this. So when y'all make this and you taste it, and you're gonna be like, oh my God, how did this turn out so good? I'm gonna tell you right now, there's only one explanation. Pure effing magic. That's what happens in those three hours. Those three hours, it's magic. So yeah, this is done. I took cut the heat. I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes or so, let it cool off a little bit. The rice is almost done. Um, once that's done, we're gonna make this a little bowl. Man, it's been a long three hours, but I can't wait. All right, check this out, y'all. See, this is a cornbread. All I did was make a, take a box of Jiffy corn mix, added in a handful of diced uh, pickled jalapenos, and made it. And well, you awesome. can put this on top of rice, and I do. You can also just put that cornbread in the bottom of a bowl and dump this on the cornbread, and it's almost better. You definitely want it. So, however you cook cornbreads, however you do it, I like the Jiffy mix with a handful of jalapenos put in. I like the sweet and the heat. Um, but yeah, this is almost done. Red beans and rice. Whew, son, I'm excited. All right, the rice is done. Look at that. The two to one 20 minutes I told you about works out. So there's that rice. There's the beans. We're going to go ahead and make us a little bowl right now. All right, let me show you how I do this. Get a little bit of rice in your bowl. Put some red beans right on top. Look how thick and delicious that looks. That is perfect. Then what I do is for me, I take a little bit of slap your mama, put a little bit right on top. Yeah, so I like it a little bit, you know, spicier. Then I like to take some slap your mama hot sauce, put 
put a couple dashes in, not too much, but there you go. I like to do that. Then what I like to do is I like to put some chopped green onions right on top. The color makes it more appetizing, but I really like green onions. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more. <laughs> so that's how I eat it, red beans and rice. All right, y'all, I'm not kidding. I mean, it sounds simple. Red kidney beans and rice, like that's it? Red beans and rice? <sighs> this is one of the best meals you'll ever eat. So I really hope, if you don't know, if you already know, you already know, but if you don't, and you're just watching this, whatever, make this. You will not be disappointed. Sipping wild turkey is optional, but make this recipe, please. Hey, and then more importantly, what you do is when you make it, send me a message, comment on the video, let me know what you thought is it the same as me? Maybe, maybe not. Let me know. Anyways, y'all enjoy. All right, y'all listen. I thought the video was ended. I was done. I was going to put pack everything up and get it to editing and just um, enjoy my dinner. But man, I have to tell you, I know how good red beans and rice is and I knew what to expect. Whew, that, I mean, goodness, this is something else. Y'all, please make this. If y'all ain't had red beans and rice like this before, you need it in your life. Trust me. Y'all let me know. Mm, delicious.